we have the start of a game here where we're trying to dodge the snakes and pick up the coin and we've been talking about overlaps when the snake overlaps our player we lose a life and once we lose all of our lives it's game over but we want to be able to fight back so in this video we're going to talk about a projectile in this particular game here while we're on our way to the coin dodging the snakes we're going to be able to shoot out an arrow from a bow and arrow and the arrow is going to be the projectile we're going to project it out so we're going to talk about making that projectile giving it the right velocity so that it moves in the right direction and then we'll just touch on overlaps one more time so that we can see what happens when our projectile does actually hit one of our enemies we're going to fire our arrow or use our projectile with our controller by pressing the a button so that's where we're going to start controller on a button pressed event so this will vent We'll run all of the code that we put inside once we press our A button. So we need to think about what is involved with being able to shoot an arrow out of our bow and arrow when we press our A button. It means that we're going to have to make the arrow, we're going to have to tell it to move, and then we'll have another event for if the arrow actually hits something. So let's start by when we push the A button, the first thing we do is we actually create the arrow as a projectile. It's still a sprite, but it's a type of sprite, like player and enemy and food, but this one's a projectile. And if we scroll down, there's a projectile subheading here, and we can see that we can make two types of projectile. Or we can make a projectile in two different ways. This one here at the top, the projectile will actually come out from where our sprite is at the time. Click, hold and drag, set projectile, to projectile from my sprite. So again, reading this out loud can help, but we're making a projectile, we want it to come from, not my sprite, but from our character. So we click on where it says my sprite, bring up the drop down menu, and we're gonna select character from that. The first thing that we're going to do, like with all new variables and sprites, is we're gonna give it a name that helps it make sense to us. So now projectile does tell, it, tell us what it is, but it's not the worst name. I'm going to give it a better one though so that we specifically know that we're talking about the arrow that we're going to shoot. So we're a new variable and we're going to give it a name, arrow. And then we have to give it a picture and then we need to give it a velocity so that it moves properly. I've got a little picture here ready. I'll just quickly snap that in and it's just a picture here of an arrow that I've drawn. And so when I push the A button, in my game, the arrow starts to come out. But you're going to notice something. It comes out on a diagonal. It never actually looks like we're shooting it straight ahead. In fact, it looks like we're really bad at using a bow and arrow when it's just flinging off to the side of it. When we make a two-dimensional game, we've only got two sets of directions. We've got up and down as the first set and left and right as the second. So we can only have control over the up and down movement and the left and right movement. And when we have a bit of up and down and a bit of left and right at the same time, we have a diagonal. So when we look at our game and we shoot our arrow out without changing anything, our arrow is actually moving on a diagonal because we've told it to move to the right with this 50 here in VX and we've told it to move down with this 50 here in VY at the same time. So it's moving down and right at the same time. Because we're just shooting our arrow forward and our character is facing down, we want it to go in a straight line away from us. We don't want any left and right movement at, the same, at, at, at all. So we're going to make VX zero. We can keep VY as 50 for now because we can change the speed later. Let's just see if we have our arrow moving in the right direction, which we do. So when we push the A button, it is making this arrow projectile. But it's not moving very fast. We would expect an arrow to come out of our bow much faster, and that's where the actual number comes in. Let's just double it and see if we like the speed. So I'll put in VY as 100. And that's looking a lot more realistic. If we go VY 150, well, it's going to be faster again, but how much faster? 
And that's looking quite good. So as the game designer, it's your choice how fast do you want to be able to shoot your arrow out. I'm just going to put it back to 100 for now. It's a nice easy speed to deal with. And now we have some code here that when we push our A button, our character can actually fight back. We need to now write some code for what happens when our arrow hits our snake. And in Make Code Arcade, that's called an overlap. And we've done overlaps already for when the snake hits us or for when we hit the coin. What about when the arrow hits the snake? Well, it's an overlap. So that's exactly where we're going to start. We're going to drag in a new overlap. We'll put it underneath the others. When the projectile on sprite of kind projectile overlaps other sprite of kind, we want to hit our snake's enemy. So this event here indicates when our projectile overlaps any sprite of the kind enemy, which to us means when our arrow hits our snake. Well, let's just copy some of the code up here. Let's make it so that the arrow gets destroyed. So it hits the snake and it doesn't keep flying, it stops. So we're going to destroy not my sprite, but the projectile that overlapped at that particular time is represented by sprite. And because we want to get rid of the arrow, let's just say it gets stuck in the snake, then we destroy the sprite. But then what happens to the snake? Well, we also want to destroy the snake. We got rid of him, it's no longer a threat. We can duplicate this, right click, duplicate. We're going to put it in. But this time remember that the snake, the one particular snake that got hit by the arrow is represented by other sprite. So we also want to destroy other sprite. But then let's reward the player for successfully landing a hit on the snake and we'll also give him a point. So we duplicate change score by one. So we're doing a lot of copying and getting inspired by our other overlaps and using some similar code here. And if we have a look at our projectile event, when the projectile hits the enemy or when our arrow hits our snake, we're going to get rid of the arrow, we're going to get rid of the snake, and then we're going to award our player one point. So let's just try that out. If we move around, we can shoot and see if we can hit a snake. And we got one. three now by the looks because our score is changing there in the top corner and it's game over I got a score of six but when we were able to successfully hit our snake it all just kind of happened instantly suddenly with not much excitement to show that you managed to hit the snake so we can just make one change here looking at our event if we want to deal with the snake and what happens when the snake is hit by the arrow we're looking at other sprite because in the event other sprite represents which enemy at the time is being hit so if we go the plus next to destroy other sprite it's going to give us another option which is the one i want to show you here and we can actually add a visual effect to when the snake or when any sprite is destroyed there's a bunch here to pick from it's really fun to actually play around and have a look at what all of these look like. So go through the list one by one. But for this video, I'm going to pick fire just so I can show you what happens when we destroy a sprite with an effect. I don't want it to last for a full half a second. So I am just going to change that to 200 milliseconds. So when I hit the snake with an arrow, it just shows a little fire effect to say that this is the snake that's been hit. And it just adds a little more excitement to our game and more of a visual indicator that I hit the snake and not the snake hit me. You can have a whole bunch of different effects to indicate different overlaps, which will give information to the player as to what's happening, but also make it more exciting to look at and play.